So tissues, um, a whole chapter and a unit on the four main tissue types. And of course, we'll see detail on each of those. Um, let's first remind ourselves what tissues are and how they fit into these levels of organization we talked about early in the semester. So we didn't talk a whole lot, but we have seen quite a bit um, about a couple of atoms. So this is the smallest level of organization, sodium, and potassium are two examples of ions that are examples of atoms. Um, beyond these ions, we're not going to see individual atoms much in this class. Many atoms in our bodies um, come together to form, what do you think? The next level is molecules. So molecules, um, you had a section of review on biomolecules. Um, so proteins, sugars like glucose. Proteins have many examples we've seen already. We'll see tons more. Um, lipids, all kinds of molecules that, that come together. Or just NaCl is a molecule, sodium chloride. Um, molecules are both inside and outside of our cells and give then help our cells have certain functions. So molecules are um, what compose cells in various types of organization. Cells are the smallest living unit, so the smallest unit of life. Um, and our bodies are made up of cells. We have seen um, a couple types of cells already this class. This week, when we talk about tissues, we'll go into a few more specialized cells. But we've seen a lot about how cells function, right? The plasma membrane, transport across them, communication, um, protein production, a, a little bit of review of that to make all the different cells in our bodies. These cells then come together to form tissues. Tissues um, are groups, a grouping of many cells that, I'm sorry, I didn't mean form, that carry out some function. So we'll see examples, of course, this week, but maybe the function is to contract, send neural signals, um, protect, connect things, very broad, those kind of broad definitions. Multiple cells, though. Um, not going to go through all these incredibly slowly, but tissues form together. Multiple tissues form organs. We'll go into some different organ organs um, and organ systems starting next week with the skin. Skin is actually an organ. Obviously, we have multiple organ systems that are necessary for a functional organism. So again, this week, it's tissues. So these are the four basic tissue types. Um, and we've talked about how a single cell can specialize and ultimately it's going to, in the human body and many other organisms, form one of these two, sorry, one of these four tissue types based on the genes that are expressed in that cell. And um, that's the differential gene expression. So even though our cells all have the same DNA, we've got these variety of phenotypes in terms of these four tissue types, which are broad categories. Epithelial tissue generally is going to be to protect. It's gonna be its main job. Connective tissue really is mostly to connect. Muscle tissue is for movement. It's going to contract for movement and nervous tissue is about communication. Of course, we will go more into depth on those this week with um, well, the first epithelial and connective and then muscle and neural. I'll do a little bit less on now. We're going to see them a whole lot when we talk about the organ systems of the muscle and nervous organ systems. So these are those same four tissue types I just had listed or there, but a little bit more information about them now. So again, tissues, we're talking about 
groups of similar cells um, that function together. So I'll write that again. So similar cells, I don't think I said that term before. Um, tissues are typically composed of either the same cell type or very similar ones. How similar they are in different tissues varies. So you're gonna see variability. Um, and also along with those cellular products. So tissues aren't just the cells themselves, but cell products, things like proteins that are excreted by the cells. Again, that function as a unit. So the function together is what I said before. to carry out some function. So nervous tissue, um, this carries electrical signals. So communications, what I said before, specifically carry electrical signals. Although there's also cells that support the carrying, of, the actual literal carrying of signals. So it's actually diverse tissue types in the nervous tissue. It's not just neurons. Um, nervous tissue is found in the brain, spinal cord, and, um, and nerves, which we'll go into in a whole section later on. Muscle. Um, muscle is to contract. That's its job for movement, right? So that's really the purpose. So this could be body movement, blood flow, heart um, that's what the heart is, movement of food to the digestive tract. And that's these kind of three locations here. So skeletal muscle for um, moving the, the body, the muscles, so this, the bones of the body, cardiac muscle for the heart, for pumping blood, and smooth muscle um, in hollow organs, for example, moving your food through your digestive system. Okay, um, then the two we're doing first are epithelial and connective. Epithelial has, these both have a little more diverse functions. Epithelial tissue is found in the lining of the digestive tract. Um, so superficial to the, the smooth muscle um, and other hollow organs, glands, and also it's your, your skin, the surface level of your skin. So its job is to protect, maintain boundaries, inside and outside the body is often what that boundary is, while still sometimes allowing selective absorption and secretion. So while allowing some things in and out, there's some specialized functions we'll see when we get into it. Um, also forming glands, for example. This example here is the epithelial tissue that's in that lining of the intestine. So here would be where the food goes through. Here would be over this side, um, would be going to the, inside the body to the bloodstream. And epithelial is lining where the stomach and intestines contact that food. Okay, um, the last type of tissue is connective tissue, the most diverse. So very diverse tissue type. It's gonna be connecting things, literally. So fat tends to connect areolar tissue, um, holds things together. So connect, um, support, bones physically support things. So connection and support is going to be the connective tissue, um, as diverse as even blood. Blood is a type of connective tissue that's connecting your body together functionally. Okay. So when we're studying these tissues, what we're studying is called histology. So that term is here. Histology is the study of tissues. We've done this in lab. We'll continue to. And when we study this in lab, we're going to look at little slices of typically organs, because that's what um, makes this where, where tissues are in a living organism. Um, so one thing to know about looking at histology is there's typically more than one tissue type you're looking at. 
And then also it's really helpful to think about how the organ is cut to help you know what you're looking at. So you've seen some of this before, but um, the simplest way to think about different cuts are longitudinal section, which is along the long axis of the organ or the structure you're looking at. That would result in something that looked like this, if it was bone, a blood vessel or esophagus is a tube or trachea. It would look like this if you cut a longitudinal section. And that's in contrast to a, if you cut along the short axis, that's a cross section. Um, it could be considered a transverse section if the if you're thinking of that thing as being up and down, bones could be facing any direction. Um, so the, that doesn't the cross section is more inclusive term for across this axis. Um, that would result in a section that looks like this. So a circle, a tube when cut across that way is going to result in a circle. Should be fairly obvious, but when it gets to looking at the tissues, it we're looking at really small things um, and sometimes more complex, it doesn't seem as obvious. But here's an example that doesn't seem quite as obvious. This example here is a kidney tubule. Um, that's called a tubule in the kidney. They're called nephrons. This one, the tube is cut along this long axis or longitudinal section, right? Longitudinal section. This is just a piece of it still. It probably would go out further than this. It's just, this is a, a picture, very zoomed in picture. The, these are the same tubules down here. So there's a tubule. These is several tubules that have been cut along mostly the cross section. This one here is actually a longitudinal section. So individual components might, um, when we're talking about the tubules themselves, you might, they're so small, you might have some cut at each direction in a given piece of organ that some organs are not like that. So here's a cross section one with, there's a little hole in the middle there. This is the epithelial tissue that lines the tubule. Here's another tubule here. So that's an example of how we can look a little bit more complicated in a organism. Overall, the idea is to help visualize how one section, some one tissue section relates to the entire organism. So if you have this egg and you're cutting it at these locations, being able to kind of visualize what you expect to see um, so that when you see this, you can visualize how the organism looks um, and it's gonna help make sense of the tissue sections and I'll help you learn the biology and um, probably other things too. Some things aren't, again, not quite as simple. Here's a macaroni noodle. If you cut it along those three lines that way, it would look even more different. So these two separate circles, you might have trouble visualizing how that came from macaroni noodle. But with this image here, you can kind of kind of see it. Um, the other thing is sometimes when we're cutting organisms in preparation, preparing the slides, they're not cut perfectly straight. So the cuts can look different than what we expected. So here's a good example of that. If you've got this long tube, um, this might be something like what the intestine, a piece of intestine looks like. When you're cutting this, it's gonna look pretty funky. Um, and this is even regardless of human error, not cutting straight. If you cut through a longitudinal section of this tube shown here, it might look something like this. So the tube is continuous, but it doesn't look like it. We'll see this in the intestine. We'll see places where ends of things are cut off and makes things look artificially um, different, right? So when you're looking at histology, always try to think about what organ you're looking at and relate what you're looking at to that organ to help you make sense of the, the tissue and learn more from it.